Come on, let's go. Lay out. Let's go. Anti Revit. Nice ball. Sandro Tonali! Ciao mi Milanisti, it's your boy Coach on the Milan Corner. A win that sees AC Milan become the only side in the top five European leagues that is unbeaten away from home in 2022. At the same time, it's one of Milan's worst performances this season. Milanisti, I'm gonna get my four takeaways from today's match. You guys know how this works. Green boxes for good performances, red boxes for bad performances. Now I'm gonna have to kick off today's video a little bit differently, guys. I'm gonna start off with a call out to Stefano Pioli. Now this is something that rarely ever happens. I never call him out. I can't give him a red box, that would be too harsh, but I do have to call out Padre Pioli, our coach for today's performance. But at the same time, before I do that, Milanisi, let me introduce you guys. Let me remind you guys to download the One Football app. The One Football app is once again your one-stop shop for all things football. The One Football app is now an official partner of AC Milan. They have a bunch of match highlights for AC Milan. You also have access to over a hundred different football leagues in over 15 different languages. So you might go wrong with starting Tata Rushanu in goal, but you can never go wrong downloading the One Football app. Once again, guys, if you don't have the One Football app, click the link in the description, download the app. So let's get back to our call out of Padre Pioli. Guys, what was this today? This is not how AC Milan plays. They've had a couple of performances back to back. Obviously there was a red card against Chelsea, but today's performance should have been a little bit more of a statement maker. We're playing a side that is what, relegation threatened, has a brand new coach, who by the way, played for AC Milan for about six months during our Bante era, which reminded me of today's team. I got to be honest, I'm not quite sure how effective Kunic has been playing in the double pivot with Sandro Tonali. I think he becomes a little bit of a liability, just roams around too much. Tonali's literally our only anchor in the midfield and he has to carry the whole squad by himself from the middle. But starting Kunic today, some of the formation today, the pieces today, they just didn't look like they were fitting. Now it could be one of those days where the squad just doesn't click, but I want you guys to let me know in the comment section. How do you rate Padre Pioli's performance today as a coach? Let's jump into the first green box from today's match. And Milanisi, this is an easy one. Sandro Tonali. Tonali. Come on, let's go. Lay out. Let's go. Ante Rebic. Nice ball. Sandro Tonali. Goal! Come on, man. Stressing me out for in 60 minutes. Last time he was here. And perhaps the winner in October. Jesus. Milani Sitonali's performance today is just one of those performances that he's put in through the entirety of the season. A reliable central midfielder. In the absence of Frank Kessie, he's fit in perfectly with Ismail Benasser. Today, as I mentioned, he was carrying Milan's midfield. And for him to be a player who doesn't get on the stat sheet too much, he has had one assist this season. He gets his first goal of the season. So in back-to-back -back trips away to Verona, a crucial goal for Sandro that got us to three points. And if you really go and look back at the play, it was all started by Tonali too. He was the one who passed the ball out to Rafael Leao. Not even close to being a good performance from Milan, but Tonali, he was perfect. Which brings me to the second green box from today's match. Milanisti, this is an easy one. This one has to go to Ante Rebic. As I said, it was hard to give Padre Pioli a red box pretty much because of the substitutions that he made. And Ante Rebic was one of those effective substitutions. But the only thing about Ante is this, his performances throughout the entirety of last season, getting a couple goals in I think 20 plus games played, a bunch of injuries. This time around too, Ante Rebic injury wise hasn't been the most reliable, but whenever he has played, whenever he's on the field, he has contributed big time to Milan attack. I believe this season he's played what, six or seven games? He's already scored three goals and today was his second assist. That's averaging a contribution almost 100% of the games he's played. The, the effectiveness of Ante Rebic on the right flank, the way he made that pass out to Sandro Tonali to get that goal. There's no doubt that Rebic's original position is you know, a lot more central up front, but can he possibly be, during this injury crisis, a reliable right winger? Before his performance today, Ante Rebic unquestionably deserves a green box, possibly even the man of the match today along with Sandro Tonali. All right, taking this video a little bit more into a negative direction, I'm gonna have to call out our youth product, Matteo Gabbia. Oh, too much space. Oh goodness, own goal, wow, for us too. Fantastic, Gabbia. Milanisi, the, the last match against Chelsea, Gabi was actually pretty good considering the fact that we're playing a high quality Premier League side. Once we gave up that penalty, we only conceded one goal. So Gabi was relatively good in the back line. But today against a much weaker Verona side, he just didn't look very stable. His positioning was off. He was, he stressed us out as fans watching the game. And the own goal that he conceded, I mean, it's hard to fully put the blame on him. I mean, uh, we have to look at it from two sides. One of the possibilities is that Tatrushan just shouted from behind and said, yo, let it go, let me grab it. 
it. So uh, Gabia was probably in two minds. Initially, he was trying to clear the ball away, and then he tried to get out in the last second, and that ended up deflecting the ball. So that's a that's obviously an error. At the same time, he could have just stuck with it and cleared the ball, looked back at his goalkeeper, and apologized and said, hey, you know what? I didn't feel comfortable and confident enough to just let it go, so I cleared the ball. But being in two minds, not being decisive, not taking control of the moment, not clearing the ball, and I'm sure a lot of it also probably breeds from a lack of experience from Gabia. So I'm a little hesitant to give him a red box, but he definitely deserves to be called out for that own goal that almost costed us two points. Which brings me to the first red box from today's match. And that red box is gonna go to the guy that Gabia was trying to protect, and that is Ciprian Tatarushanu. Oh, this is dangerous. Very dangerous! Clear it! Clear it! Jesus! Oh! Guys, Tatarushanu didn't really make a mistake or anything today. I think it's pretty obvious that our defensive line has not a lot of confidence when Tatarushanu is on goal. And at the same time, the one thing that I've noticed constantly about Tatarushanu is if there's any type of a ball coming in the air, he never takes control to catch the ball. He always leaves it to his defenders, even if the ball is right at the penalty spot and there's no one really there. I think in the 90th minute, it was because of him that we consistently kept getting free kicks and corner kicks because Tatarushanu just wouldn't run to leap and grab the freaking ball. And that lack of reliability in being a shot stopper for our defensive line and that lack of control that he's taking on the game by catching a few balls or freaking punching them out, whatever it is, just clear him. Don't consistently rely on our center backs. I guess for that reason, I'm going to have to give Tatarushanu a red box. So let me know in the comment section. Do you guys agree with that? Do you think that he's done a decent job in the absence of Mike Mignon? To give Tatarushanu a little bit of credit, I think the only thing that he's relatively decent at is probably distribution. He's actually not a bad passer of the ball, but when it comes to being a goalkeeper with your hands, I don't think I can rely on him at all. And let me know in the comment section because I think somebody asked in the previous video, is it worth it to maybe try Mirante against Monza? And the next shout out before I jump into the final green box from today's video, I was considering giving this shout out to Rafael Leao, but I think I'm a little bit tempted to give this shout out to our left flank in Leao and Teo Hernandez. We love see there's something slightly different about Teo this season. I've mentioned it in the previous videos too, but his demeanor and his maturity as a person wearing the captain's armband throughout the game the way he seems to be sort of leading his fellow teammates he seems like he's aged like two or three years over the summer and at the same time rafael leao on the left flank now oh nice ball to uh, olivier rafael leao 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 there should be a goal boys goal was it Leao's best game? No, I don't think so. I think he hasn't had a very good game in a couple of games now because we don't just need him to dribble the ball, you know, past a couple of defenders and, you know, get the highlights reel of, hey, look, Leao dribbling. We need him to be uh, significantly more involved in actually creating opportunities and scoring goals. Now, he's scored four goals this season. He's assisted six goals. So obviously we're asking for quite a bit from him. But if he wants to become that super, superstar player, he needs to offer more. So I'm going to give a shout out to our left flank and Rafael Leao and Theo Hernandez. And the final green box from today's match, I'm so happy to be doing this because uh, this is the kind of story you want from a lot of new players coming to Milan. Seven minutes, that was his appearance for today for Milan. But Malik Chow deserves a freaking green box. Sandro, stay on him. Oh my goodness, who was that? Chow! Wow! And once again, even though I gave Padre Pioli a call out today. This is the genius of that man at the same freaking time. Making the substitutions that he did in the second half after Sandro Tonali scored the goal. Taking Rafael Leao off. Leao didn't really look too happy to be coming off. I think he wanted to get that third goal. And instead he put on Malik Chow. And boy, what a performance did this guy put in. Two consequential freaking blocks. If Chow wasn't there, guys, with Gabia there alone with Ficaro Tomori, the Mori who's already somewhat struggling for form, that might have actually been an equalizer for Verona. Here's what we know about Paolo Maldini. If he's gonna make a defensive signing, there's a very good chance that it's gonna be high quality. And for now, for today's performance, even though it was a 10 minute appearance from Malik Chow, he showed enough quality, and once again, let me know in the comments section, to possibly get the nod ahead of Gabia against Monza. Should Chow, based on his performance today, be a starter against Monza. And for his performance today, the 10 minute appearance that guaranteed Milan three points, the 21 year old German center back 
gets a green box. There you have it, Milan. You see, those are my four takeaways from today's match. A consequential win for Milan. A rough, scrappy win. Milan has now entered back into the top four. We've been sitting fifth place. Now we're in third place behind Napoli and Atalanta, I think. Once again, let me know what you guys think about my four takeaways. Which players would you give a green box to? Which player would you might give a red box to? And as always, guys, Forza Milan. Grazie mille e ciao a tutti.